Hello, I'm Peter McClellan with White Wilderness Sled Dog Adventures and this little film is to help you learn how to drive a sled while you're here. All of our trips are hands-on and so we want you to be safe and have a great time and so paying attention to this little video will help you have both. So this is our dog sled. We hook up the dogs to the front obviously and when you're driving you're on the back. So when you're driving, you're going to be standing on the back and you're going to be hanging on, which I know sounds obvious, but every year somebody goes to take a picture and the dogs jump and they fall off. So remember, no texting and mushing. Okay, so you're going to be hanging on. You don't want to hang on with a death grip. You don't want to hang on too loose. Just hang on, relax like. And you're standing on these runners, which have little grippies. And if they get full of snow and ice, like this, you're just going to kick it loose. You want to have that to stand on. You don't want to drive your sled too rigid or too relaxed. You want to stay upright, relaxed like you would if you were downhill skiing. If the sled goes up over bumps, you stay balanced with the world. Just let the sled do what it's going to do. <coughs> Most of the steering is done by the dogs, but you can help guide the sled. Just lean away from anything you would like to not hit, such as trees, rocks, your friend that just fell off the sled in front of you. There are two brakes on this dog sled. There's this little chunk of snowmobile track brake. Think of this as your slowdown brake. Then you have what we call the bar brake. Think of this as the stopping and staying stop brake. Now, to use the track brake, you can use a foot with varying amounts of pressure. You might put all your weight on it and just be having your other foot here for balance. You might just put a heel on it and just a little bit of pressure just to take the speed down just a hair. When do you use the slowdown brake? You're going to use it, first of all, leaving the dog yard. The biggest thing people do wrong is they don't slow down all the way out the dog yard and all the way out the first part of the trail. Stay on the brake for the first, let's say, at least 10 minutes of your dog trip. Then you're going to use this brake to stay behind a team in front of you. Back teams are often faster because they have someone to chase. So use the brake to slow it down. Finally, and most important, you are going to use this brake to slow down on every single downhill. If you are going downhill, you are on this brake. Remember what I said earlier about how the steering is done with the dogs? Well, if you lose that tension between the dogs and your sled, you lost your steering. So on the brake, slow them down. This brake is really easy to use and comfortable to use, so you can be very effective with it without any problems. Then we have our bar brake, and you use this to stop by either putting one foot on it, or you can put two feet on it, and if you're real serious, you pull up like that. Now, just because you stopped your dog team doesn't mean you can get off of it. The only time you can be off the brake is if you're moving or if you're tied off. So don't get off the brake just because you stopped until we come back and tie off your team. Helping dogs. Sometimes you're going to have to help the dogs up the hills. To do so, you can put your left foot on the right runner or the right foot on the left runner and pedal. Just like when you had a scooter as a kid. Sometimes you'll have to actually get off the sled and run alongside without letting go of the handlebar. Running alongside is not only a great way to help the dogs, but a great way to warm up. If your feet are cold and you get to a hill, run up the hill. So now we have communicating with our dogs. There are three rules of thumb and one rule of law when it comes to talking to the dogs. Rule of thumb number one, less is best. If you're, all right, let's go, come on, come on, let's go. They're gonna get really sick and tired of you in a hurry. Rule number two, is there's no need to yell. They have really good hearing 
and you're only trying to talk to your dogs, not everybody's dogs. Finally, how you say it is as important as what you say. So for example, the word to stop is whoa. And if you start yelling out, whoa, 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 you just said, go, 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 go. So think about how you're trying to communicate. So we're trying to stop, we're trying to be calm. So we say, whoa, whoa. Conversely, the word to go is all right, and we are excited, all right. The rule of law, whoa means stop, it does not mean slow down. If you are trying to slow down, you use the slow down brake. If you're trying to stop, you use the word whoa and the bar brake or the stopping brake. So what do we have for dog commands? We have to go, all right. Now later on in the day, if the dogs are not paying attention and you're stopped, you can say ready and they'll get set to go. And you say, all right. To stop, we use the word whoa. And we use that in conjunction with the bar break we've already talked about. Now, we're going to be heading through the woods in a caravan. And you are going to be following your guide. However, it's fun to learn the voice commands we use for giving directions to the dogs. And you can remember them with the monomic hog, H-O-G. So left is H, which is ha. To go past something is O, which is on by. And right is G, which is G. So ha means left, on by means straight ahead, and right is G. Ha, on by, G. Now if you get to an intersection and you goof it up, and your guy goes haw left, and you say G right, your dogs are going left anyway, so don't worry about it. But it's fun to learn those commands. All right, so now it's time to learn how to harness dogs. We've got multiple sized harnesses, and you can tell what size the harness is by the color loop. So this medium is a blue, and this large is a green. And we'll tell you which harness goes with which dog. So the loop is what gets hooked up to the traces on the sled. So you're going to start by hanging that down, and then you want to find this big X piece here. And you're going to put that towards you, and that gives you this rectangle piece called the breastplate. And we're going to fold that in half, and that'll line up these straps with this yoke here. So you're going to hang on to here, and you're going to hang on here. Now. We need a dog. Card. Good girl. Okay, so all of our dogs are friendly, but they can be big and strong. So you need to be a little careful that they don't knock you over. So we're going to put our dog in between our legs. We're going to squeeze between the rib cage and the hips. Now we have our harness, and all this part of the harness is going to end up on her back. So put that on her back, come up over her nose. You're going to bring it down. Yes. And we're going to bring this collar forward. Now these straps are here. We're going to bring a leg up and over. A leg up and over. And there we have it. And when you get here, we'll show you how to hook up. We're looking forward to having you on your White Wilderness trip. It's going to be a great day. This video will help you get ready for it. But we're going to be covering this again when you arrive. So have any of your questions ready and we'll be answering them.